So our first speaker today is Xinzeng Wang, and the title of his talk is Whole Body MRI for Metastatic Cancer Detection Using T2-Weighted Imaging with Fat and Fluid Suppression, and his mentor is Anant Madaranthakam. Xinzeng. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, metastatic, uh, metastatic cancer uh, results in about 90% <coughs> of human cancer deaths. It can spread to multiple organs. For example, the bone is a common site for metastasis. Medical imaging is one of the major techniques for the detection of metastasis, since it is non-invasive and can provide whole body coverage. Currently, multiple imaging modalities uh, have been proposed for the detection of metastasis, such as CT and PET-CT. However, the CT has a low sensitivity. Although PET-CT has a higher sensitivity and specificity, the cost is high and uh, the availability is uh, limited. Bone scintigraphy is often used, but it is specific to bone metastasis. Uh, and uh, the sensitivity and the specificity are moderate. All these three techniques also use ionizing radiation, which is a major concern in younger, uh, younger population as well as uh, repeat follow-ups. Currently, whole body MR has been proposed to detect metastasis. Specifically, whole body diffusion weighted imaging has shown a promising sensitivity and specificity in the previous study. However, there are still a lot of challenges. Whole body diffusion weighted imaging suffers from geometric distortions, especially at 3T. For patients with metal implants, it can further reduce the image quality. Due to the T2 sign theory effect, more B values are required to generate the ADC map. It also suffers from long scan time and low resolution. So all these things will limit, uh, will result in the per-localization and reduce the sensitivity. So the purpose of this study is to develop a whole body MR technique at 3T with improved lesion conspicuity and limited geometric distortion for metastatic cancer detection. In standard T2-weighted whole body MR, fat shows high signal intensity due to its long T2. So usually, fat suppression method like STIR is used to improve the lesion conspicuity, but sacrificing the SNR. Fluids also shows high signal intensity. It also can reduce <coughs> the lesion conspicuity and the specificity. So uh, simultaneous fat and the fluid suppression can help to improve the lesion conspicuity. To achieve this goal, we develop a sequence called Detect, which acquire images uh, at a short TE and a long TE in a single uh, reputation. We also use multi-echo diction to acquire in-face and out-face images at both short TE and long TE. In total, four echoes are acquired following a single excitation, two echoes at short TE, two echoes at long TE. Each set of images will go through the standard diction process. At short TE, we can achieve uniform fat suppression, but, or water fat separation, but at long TE, we observe the large water fat swaps. So we developed a uh, technique called shared field map diction, which will reuse the phase map estimate from the salt image to eliminate the water fat swaps. To suppress the fluid, we make a complex subtraction between the water only images at two different TE. Then we can generate the detect image with a simultaneous fat and fluid suppression. To reduce the geometric distortion, uh, actual acquisition is usually used in diffusion with imaging, and then the image can be reformatted into a plan. But the scan time is proportional to the number of the slices. To reduce the scan time, coronal acquisition also can be used. However, in the coronal diffusion with imaging, we also can observe the similar geometric distortions. But using the detector with coronal acquisition, we can further reduce the scan time uh, as well as reduce the geometric distortion. Well, here you can see uh, the severe ge geometric distortion in the uh, diffusion weight imaging. So we evaluate our sequences and reconstruction methods with five health volunteers and five patients with known metastatic renal cell carcinoma on Philips 3T ingenia scanner. The whole body scan were 
covered from uh, were covered with five stations from the head to the thumb uh, to the uh, knee. The detected images were acquired with uh, a, a higher implant resolution. Uh, in chest and abdominal section, we also use breath hold. So the total scan time with breath hold instructions for detect is about seven minutes. Uh, diffusion weight imaging takes about 16 and a half minutes to complete the whole body scan. This is a result of a patient. The detect images, uh, can uh, we can identify the, all the lesions in the detect image, with, uh, which also can be identified in the uh, diffusion weight image. However, this patient has a metal implant, <coughs> implant in the uh, right femur. So diffusion weight imaging suffers from severe ge geometric distortion. It's hard to identify one lesion, which can be identified in the detect. Uh, due to the T2 sign through effect, uh, it's hard to identify one lesion in another patient's in the brain, uh, in another patient's brain, um, in diffusion weight imaging, but it can be identified in the detect. This lesion uh, also confirmed on the previous uh, clinical scan. On the same patient, uh, in the diffusion weight Im imaging, we also can identify a lesion in the left femur but it's harder to, uh, to localize it. So we, we are not sure whether it is in the bone or out of the bone. But using detect, we can clearly see that uh, this lesion is in the bone. But for our detect, we also can provide a fat only image, which can help us confirm the lesion is from the uh, bone and improve our confidence of localization. All the images were evaluated by consensus of three radiologists. In this table, you can see the detect can identify more lesions compared to the diffusion with imaging. For the last patient, we can't finish the, uh, we can't complete the diffusion with the whole body scan due to a significantly long scan time. So in conclusion, detect images show uniform fat and fluid suppression with high SNR. Detect sequence is also robust against the image distortion. It is time efficient uh, and uh, practical. Detect shows improved sensitivity as well as improved lesion localization in the pilot study. In the future, we will conduct more uh, prospective clinical validation to determine the sensitivity and the specificity. So at the last, I would like to thank my mentor and uh, all the people who uh, contributed to this work, as well as the support from the NIH grant. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, Jin Zhang is uh, finishing his PhD this summer, and he's going to move down to Houston to take a job with GE. Are there any questions from anybody in the audience? You have to. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's a long way to cover from the top of the head to the middle of the thigh. Did you have to move the bore? Yeah. Were there stations? Yeah. Yes. And so, did this? Did you have trouble with the stations overlapping each other? Oh, uh, we have a bit of overlap, and then we can. So then can, we can attach all the stations and generate the whole body images. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other? Yeah, Tom, Dr. Grist. Thank you. That's a very interesting technique. Um, so you did further fluid suppression by subtracting yeah. the two echoes. Yeah. So does that? How much does that affect the signal to noise? Uh, uh, do you lose much? Yeah, because uh, for the second T, we use a very long T. It's about 440 milliseconds. So most uh, uh, for the other soft tissue like uh, soft uh, gray and white matter, it already. It almost decay to zero. We uh, we reduce a bit of the SNR, but not too much. I see. Yeah. So it really only uh, suppresses it, it subtracts long. the fluid, the yeah. stuff with a really long T2. Yeah. Long I see. T2. Yeah. Okay. So so I have one last question. What took longer, uh, coding the sequence or coming up with the acronym? <laughs> <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> both. <laughs> okay. Thank you.